Hello everyone, I'm with me and today we're going to be responding to some videos that I found on Facebook. Recently I watched a video, Genetically Modified Skeptic. I watched his video about um, coming out to his Facebook friends. Uh, he's, he basically came out as an atheist to everybody on Facebook and I found that that was cool. And it kind of inspired me to kind of come out as well, but I decided against that and well you're going to find out kind of why in a little bit. So I was going on Facebook and I decided to browse some things. I found two videos and then later on that week I found another video. These three videos, I'm going to respond to them <laughs> because while they're interesting to say the least, I hope you find my responses to them enjoyable. This is completely off the cuff. This is not scripted. This is just, I just got done from a run and I came back home and decided to record. So if I, if I, if I heave, I'm sorry. Anyways, let's get on with the first video. This video is a conversation with, uh, with God. From what I see so far, this is clearly talking about, like, this person's had a terrible day. It'll explain later on in a video his terrible day and God's answer to it. But you know where this is going, right? Oh, I've had a terrible day, God. Why did you do this to me? See, that's why you don't drink coffee. You know, if somebody made my sandwich wrong at a... Uh, Subway, for instance, I wouldn't care. Mainly because I'm not a very picky person. I mean, unless there's rat poison in the sandwich, I'll eat it. It's no big deal to me. Did you notice that the camera was like, it stopped at the trees and went back. I don't know. I don't know why I did that. I guess it ran out of photos. So clearly, in case you didn't notice, all of most of these were kind of petty. I mean, the car not starting on time was uh, that. That makes sense. God, why'd you make this car? Well, why'd you make my car not start correctly? What the hell, dude? And then the other ones like, oh, my sandwich wasn't made perfectly well, and all oh, my foot massager, it, it didn't work today. You know, some crap like that. So clearly these aren't necessarily big deals, which is interesting. And it's kind of weird because God is going to give the explanation, but I'm going to ask some more questions after he gives these explanations. Now, of course, the obvious question is, why didn't you just, I don't know, stop the drunk driver's car from starting up? You stopped me from starting my car. Why didn't you stop the drunk driver from starting his car? Yeah, the sh sharp edges that can, that can harm me. Why didn't uh, you just stop the clock from falling over? I mean, thank you for the new shirt. I don't mean to complain, God. Thank you for the shirt, but come on, man. It, it, that's my work's property. Like, what if they blame me for the freaking clock falling, huh? Then who gets in trouble? Not God. Well, thanks. I don't know why you didn't just, I don't know, make a not sick person make the sandwich clearly god is manipulating free will in this story so the person who was sick made a wrong sandwich because god made him make the wrong sandwich this is overcomplicated, god why didn't you just make somebody else make my sandwich for me or better yet not make that person sick Oh, wow. Okay, why didn't you make the other person's phone dead? He's like, oh, I'm gonna tell somebody a, a bad thing. And they're like, oh, your wife's cheating on you. Boah, ha, ha, ha. Why didn't you make his phone die? I don't understand why you had to make my phone die. Jeez. Why didn't you just make the foot massager work? I mean, you're God. You can stop a car from starting. So why didn't you just make it work? I don't... 
understand. <laughs> Now, of course, the, the obvious questions I have for God is things that happen that are really fucked up. God, he stopped this guy's car. He stopped it from working because a drunk driver was driving down the road and he would have hit him. The obvious question is, well, what about the drunk drivers who actually wreck and kill people? Sometimes, if not most of the time, the drunk driver lives and everybody else pays the price. Sometimes it's that horrible. What about rape, for instance? If somebody gets molested, why did that happen? You know, some people kill themselves because they got molested, and it's horrible. All I'm saying is that all of this is just so stupid and random. Like, why? Just, I know this is a hypothetical story, but clearly the person who wrote it, they just thought of things like, oh, that would, yeah, this is why, la, 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 la. And I get the message. The point is that bad things happen, but you'll get through it with God. And that's that's the story of uh, Job, right? Yeah, Job, the guy who, who uh, had his family get murdered. Yeah, that was fun. Clearly, in a story context, I actually like that story, the story of Job, because it's about how terrible, horrible, disgusting things will happen. But you know what? You will get through it, and you will prosper, and then you will be greater than you ever were before. And I like that. I like that. It's a good message. Of course, the story itself, how, why it happens, at least, is terrible. So this next one is Seven Promises of God to You. I will be with you. So that's a pretty obvious one. Um, as somebody who uh, deconverted from Christianity, clearly that is not the case. I will protect you. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. Like, what about people who are actually harmed? What about those people who just horrible, disgusting things happen to them? And it's terrible. And you'll, you'll keep them from harm? I will be your strength. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and are safe. So the first thing I want to mention is that the verse is like, The righteous run into it and they're safe. The righteous. Everyone else is terrible. But yeah, God will be your strength. That isn't the case. I'm a really big advocate of you being you, right? I hate it when people say that God has helped them through so many things in life. Because it's not the fact that they've been helped. It's the fact that they helped themselves. They're the ones that got through those terrible things in life. God didn't do anything because he, you know, I believe at least a Christian God doesn't exist. So I believe he didn't do anything. And when people are like, oh, well, God helped me through this hard time. No, he didn't. You did. You're the one who did it. You know? I will answer you. Well, obvious one. He didn't answer me when I was crying out to him, so... I will provide for you. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you. Plans to give you hope and future. Yes, so God has a plan for us. He will provide for us because he has a plan for all of us. Clearly, clearly God has a plan for all of us. If a plane crashes and everybody dies in it, yeah, it's God's plan. I will give you peace. God wasn't the one that helped me become the person that I am today. It was me. I will always love you. Aw, oh, that's so sweet. Only he existed. <laughs> so those are seven promises. So this one, the audio, it didn't record properly. But I'll, but I'll try. I'll try to get it to work properly. I'm tired of apologizing for being a believer. I'm tired of apologizing for being a man of God. Everything we stand for is under attack in this wicked nation. 
They hate the truth. They hate God and they hate Jesus. But I don't care what you like and don't like. You can do whatever you want. Jesus Christ is still the only way to the Father. Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. He was born of a virgin named Mary. He is the fulfillment of the law and the prophets. He is the answer to every prophetic function of the Old Testament. Yes, yes. This guy's a motivational speaker. You guys aren't under attack. I mean, we aren't going about murdering, beating up Christians. That's a bad thing. That's a bad thing, by the way. Don't do that, okay? Jesus. But no, you guys aren't under attack. And you don't need to apologize for being religious. You guys are still the majority here in America. You guys still have power. I mean, I don't know if you realize this, but if a Christian boss knows that one of their employees is an atheist, somebody who, in their eyes, hates God, what do you think is going to happen? I'm going to let you come to that conclusion yourself. Because I think you guys, all of you are smart enough to come to the conclusion yourself. Nobody's under attack. In that, even in that hypothetical scenario where the boss is a Christian and the employee is an atheist, in that hypothetical scenario, if the atheist employee is fired, it doesn't mean that atheism is under attack, okay? Cause it's just bosses doing what they think is right, even if it isn't. And thing is, too, is that nobody's under attack. You know, once, once people are riding out in the streets, pulling people out of their cars and beating them because they're religious or not religious, then your beliefs are under attack. But until there's violence all the time... No, nobody's under attack, okay? Quit being dramatic. He is the King of kings and Lord of lords. He is the payment for sin. He is the righteous king, and he will crack the sky at the last trumpet sound with the holy angels, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, and those that remain will be caught up to meet him in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. He is the answer. He's everything, everything. Jesus will do everything. He is the kings of kings, the lords of lords. Very nice. Um, he's talking about the rapture or just going to heaven in general. Either way, uh, damn, dude, you, good job on the preaching. You're giving these people hope, They're raising their hands in the air going, hallelujah. I believe in Jesus. And I don't. And I'm tired of apologizing. I'm tired of having to whisper my prayers over my food at a restaurant. Because the people at the next table are offended. But if I'm cussing as loud as I want and drinking as much as I want, they have nothing to say. But the moment I say Jesus... So now I'm louder. Lord... Thank you for this food I'm about to receive. And bless it, sanctify it, make it nourishing, and bless these people at the table next to me that's staring in my face. In Jesus' name, Rababasiaranamosuku. Amen. I hate having to be scared to speak up about anything that has to do with atheism during, I don't know, one of my classes or when I'm with my friends. It sucks to feel like the people around you just won't understand and will just kind of like hate you for being you. It sucks. And when it's, it's somebody is just like, oh, well, my family's religious. And the teacher's like, oh, that's cool. And then I, and then I talk about anything that might even seem anti-religious and it's kind of it gets awkward. There's like that moment where you're like, uh, this is kind of uneasy now. I don't like you feel like you need to whisper pray, but you don't. Okay, listen. Even if you live in a place where it's mostly atheist, if you want to pray, pray. Nobody's stopping you, okay? I live in a place that's mostly Catholic. Nobody's stopping me from being an atheist. The only person that will stop me from being an atheist is me, or, or God, if he comes down. See what I mean? He, this guy seems to... He, this guy really thinks he's, his religion is under attack. <laughs> I'm just... 
it baffles me. It baffles me. These women came into this restaurant I was at and one time they were wearing hijabs. Yeah, people were looking, including me. But you know what? Who cares? If they want to wear a hijab, let them wear a hijab, okay? I have my reasons for why I completely disagree with what they're doing. But in the end, it's their choice. I can't really force them to not wear a hijab. So the crowd goes wild. And he gets applause, and then he gets back massage, and then the world explodes. The end. This video was kind of ranty. It was kind of nitpicky, but it's just the type of stuff I see on Facebook. And I don't go comments on the posts and be like, you're stupid. Ha ha. That's, it's, it's not who I am. I don't do that. But it does upset me because a lot of my friends, a lot of my family, they're, they're religious. And I don't really know how they would respond if I came out as an atheist. Some of my family members are slightly religious. Some of them are deeply religious. These videos I saw were all from one of my aunts who just recently started to become religious and just recently is starting to post a lot of religious stuff. I don't want to be the guy who crashes the party. I don't want to be the wall, you know? I want people to prosper and be themselves and be who they are, no matter what. But it's kind of funny, as much as I want people to be as active and as, you know, as spiritual as they want, as loud and proud as they want, sure, I'm going to judge them, and a lot of people are going to judge them. But you know what I'm not going to do? I'm not going to tell them that what they're doing is wrong. Unless, of course, they're saying some hateful things like, oh, all, all the gays are going to hell. Then I'm going to be like, hang on there, okay? Put that sign down. <laughs> but even then, they still have the right to say that disgusting shit but but i'm a huge advocate for freedom of speech i love it when people are like yes jesus because it's motivational even though i'm not religious it's still really motivational it's just funny because as somebody who likes when people are loud and proud i kind of have to stay quiet about some things you know okay so hope you guys enjoyed the video please leave a like if you did and uh yeah that's pretty much it I'll respond to some more videos, uh, some more Facebook videos if I find any, or posts, whatever. But yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. Bye-bye.